What's the worst meal you've ever been served in someone's home? My grandma had signature dishes, which meant it was all she made, ever. Swiss steak consisted of the cheapest cut of meat, cooked until hard and grey and then she'd dump a can of mushrooms on top and burn those until they turned into a congealed topping. Ramen noodles were usually cooked just to the point of liquidity. If she was feeling fancy she'd dump in a can of tuna and mix that all together with the seasoning packets. Fruit salad was orange or lime jello mixed with canned fruit. The topping would consist of mayonnaise and cream cheese spread over the top. She also served reheated McDonald's french fries and used expired condiments and seasonings. She also washed her dishes with Ajax or Comet. I like how nobody commented on the mayo and cream cheese spread. I have never heard of that before and frankly sounds utterly disgusting. My sister tried her hand at ranch potatoes. But since she didn't have the ranch seasoning she just decided to pour ranch dressing over raw potatoes and bake it. Nothing like hot greasy ranch glop over semi-cooked red potatoes. Yeah heating ranch turns it into something else. Something not good looking or tasting. A stir fry with a cup of vinegar in it. My friend misread the instructions that said 1 tablespoon and put a cup in instead. Add 2 cups of soy sauce, some brown sugar, bay leaves and pepper. Heck you've got a dubo. And a cooked chicken with strawberry yogurt as a topping, cooked with the yogurt plopped on top, and an orange slice as a garnish. Truly bizarre. That sounds like an alien flipped through a few cooking shows and decided to try and make his own dish. In Mount Pleasant, MI, there's a culinary tradition of a side dish consisting only of peas, peanuts, and a lot of Miracle Whip. My old girlfriend's family was very excited to serve it, and I had to act like it wasn't some wildly weird crap that nobody should ever put in their mouths. Mount Unpleasant. My grandma once served me burn to a crisp hamburgers and hot dogs with this soap washed salad. Yes, you could taste 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 for dessert. There was cinnamon jello made hot tamales. It was revolting. At least she did burn the meat though, because it had been thawing in the summer heat outside for the entire day. Grandma's meals were always a little terrifying. If she didn't cook the meat long enough, there was plenty of food poisoning to be had. My mother's grandmother, whom I never met, wouldn't use ingredients in recipes she didn't like. So, no baking powder or baking soda had a recipe called for it because she tasted these ones and didn't like them. She didn't use salt in any that was supposed to be sweet, like a pie or other dessert. Apparently, it was pretty wretched. A guy I was dating in high school tried to impress me by making chicken alfredo. He didn't have heavy cream for the sauce so he used French vanilla coffee creamer and didn't tell me. Seems you figured it out. Brother's wife put 5 boneless chicken breasts in a pan, poured canned peaches and canned pears over them, and baked at 354 an hour. Nothing else. It was a secret family recipe she grew up with and loved. It was terrible and I felt poisoned. If that was the best recipe my family could create, I'd keep it a secret too. It wasn't so much a bad meal, but the method of serving was different. A friend invited me and a couple of other friends to dinner when I was in high school. His mom served homemade chicken soup, which was fine. There was chocolate cake for dessert, but instead of serving it on separate plates, she went around to each of our places and sliced off a piece into each of our soup bowls, each of which still had some broth. Chocolate cake flavored with chicken broth is not a flavor I really want to repeat. When I was around 9 or 10, my friend's mom offered me a half a stick of butter as a snack. Apparently my friend's favorite afternoon snack was a full stick of butter. I declined as respectfully as you might expect a 9 or 10 year old would. My secret shame is that I would eat whole sticks of butter when I was a baby. I think it reflects worse on my parents than me tbh. My girlfriend attempted to make a recipe from Skyrim called Apple Cabbage Stew. I'm not proud to say I lied to her and said it was good, but she looked like she was on the verge of tears so I choked it down. That was the last time we tried anything from that recipe collection. I made sweet rolls once. When I was about 11 my family and I went to my mom's half brother's sister's house for the first and last time. That lady was crazy. She wanted to host this whole fancy dinner party which consisted of half a bag of chips as the appetizer and a cooked ham and this abomination she had to audacity to call baked macaroni and cheese. 
Plus to make it better she didn't start cooking until after we got there. She told us to come over at 6 and started cooking at 7. From what I remember she used Kraft Mac and cheese powder mix but she used different noodles. And then she made too much noodles so she put slices of American cheese on top of it and then she put crushed and whole graham crackers on top of it. And baked it for just the right amount of time where half of the cheese wasn't melted. I honestly almost cried at the dinner table. Even her husband was like WTF did you make which made the experience 100x more awkward. And to make the whole thing even worse her son wouldn't let me have a turn at GTA 3. Even after I told him the cheat code to get the tank. Homeboy didn't even know about cheat codes until I told him. Does it count if it was my home but a new roomie? Roomie wanted to cook for us to celebrate us all getting our first apartment together. He made cinnamon covered chicken breast. We tried our best but couldn't handle it. He put cinnamon in again when he made mac and cheese. When we admitted we didn't care for it he insisted it was because we were used to eating TV dinners and crap and had never experienced gourmet cooking before. Which admittedly, we hadn't. But if that's gourmet cooking, I'm happy to be ignorant. Friend's dad when I was young had a distinct skill of barbecuing meat which is burnt black on the outside and raw on the inside. Also I recall at the same house when they had a roast and were slicing it, their dog was on the counter, biting into or licking every piece they sliced before they finished cutting, and served the plate as is on the table. Ro, that, sure is something. I've got two solid contenders. One was at a great aunt's house, and she served spinach and milk. Like she literally got spinach wilted it a little and then poured warm milk over it. I think it was supposed to be a creamed spinach type deal but I was gagging with every bite. Second was a spaghetti bolognese but it had chunks of cooked apple in it. I ate around the apple as best I could but it was truly horrendous. I feel you on 3 spaghetti sauce with apples. I feel like this might have been a mid 90s food trend. I was once served bolognese sauce with pineapple in it. It was weird. The first Thanksgiving I spent with my ex-wife's family was terrible and scary. I grew up in the restaurant business, so everyone in my family can cook. And I took that for granted. First the turkey, unseasoned or marinated, full of box stuffing. They were taking it out of the oven when I mentioned that it was clearly not cooked yet. It had only been in for maybe 3 hours. The skin was still pale, and the temp gauge was still down. I was told that those gauges never work. So no point in using that as a guide and they did not own a meat thermometer for me to prove my point. They cut the first piece to reveal a soft pink core of raw turkey. Instead of putting it back in the oven, or even cutting up strips to pan cook, they decided to microwave each portion. They did not offer to microwave the stuffing. I refused to have any claiming I did not like stuffing. I had one small bite of turkey and made it disappear when no one was looking. The sides were okay for the most part, no seasoning or flair, but I filled up in it. The rolls were cool and raw in the middle, so no rolls for me. Finally it was time for dessert. They made pumpkin pie. Looking at it I was already questioning the texture, but as I am a cook and not a baker, I figured I could just be overcritical from the dinner fiasco. I took my first bite and nearly spit it back out onto my plate. The whipped cream was the only thing that saved me from doing so. I asked what recipe they used for the pie. Apparently it was a silly question, as they just used a pre-made crust and added a can of pumpkin. No condensed milk, no sugar, nothing but the canned pumpkin and the crust. Every year afterwards either we hosted dinner for her parents or we visited my family. Oh man that's all it takes. Ruin Thanksgiving dinner once and you never have to cook it again. I was invited over to a guy's house who tried to cook steaks use vidi for the first time. It was flavorless and rubbery. Dessert was an attempt at ice cream sous vide. Who knew? It came out tasting like plain yogurt that was hot rather than cold. I still can't figure it out. He topped it with root beer gelatin balls. Most bizarre meal ever and poorly executed. My first girlfriend in high school. Her mom was the best cook on earth. She made mashed potatoes that were so good they could sit in the fridge for 3 days uncovered and you could gobble them up cold. I had a reputation with her family for being able to just demolish everything she made. One time we went to her dad's mom's house for her dad's birthday. My girlfriend and her mother rode separately and they both warned me that the grandma was not a good cook. I figured how bad can it be my god it was so freaking bad. 
literally every dish was atrocious. Unseasoned boiled meat would have been better than the crap she made. The worst part was her mashed potatoes. They were grey and watery and tasted like death. Everyone there was fully aware of my diehard love of mashed potatoes. I managed to eat everything on my plate out of politeness and when they saw I was done my girlfriend's dad, his brother and his mom all started hounding me to get seconds. I had to come up with an excuse that I was sick. I felt bad, but goddamn that was the worst food I've ever eaten. I left feeling bad for my girlfriend's dad and his brother for having to grow up eating that slop. It's hard to freak up mashed potatoes. My mother always uses instant which is med, but she adds a ton of skim milk until they are room temp soup. Oh, and she makes everything the day before and microwaves it for the dinner. Somehow the watery milk potatoes manage to still be room temp. My grandmother was such a terrible cook that once when she was cooking corned beef, I walked into her kitchen and promptly threw up due to the smell. My dad once said that he thought she was a good cook until he went into the army. He wasn't trying to be funny, it was just an honest observation. My dad once said that he thought she was a good cook until he went into the army. That's freaking savage Lmeo. Oh boy, here we go. I was in a man's house in Afghanistan, and as is tradition, he made us tea. The tea wasn't great, it was really just warm, dirt flavored water as far as I could tell. But, to be polite, I consumed my cup's worth, as was expected of me. Next, he gave us rice. Now, these guys are poor, but it's rude to turn down food. So what you do is this, take a little bit, an appetizer sized amount, eat it relatively slowly and thank them profusely. Easy enough. Well, unfortunately is this particular instance, the gentleman was lacking in certain utensils, dinnerware and osher standards. The rice was served to us on these slabs of shale this guy used as plates and had an unholy amount of gravel, not sand, mixed in. Not to exaggerate, but the pieces of stone in the rice were dancing up to pea sized. This dude starts munching, so we all follow suit, trying to minimize chewing and maximize swallowing. Haha. <laughs> Again, we are this rockeris with our fingers since he had no utensils for us. His teeth were pretty jacked up. So I can only assume he eats rocks regularly. But anyways, super cool dude, super kind gesture, and I hope we were nothing short of gentlemanly in our acceptance of his hospitality. Most likely of these stories, I was like why didn't you just pretend you weren't hungry didn't like an ingredient, or accidentally spill it because I was thinking there is no good reason to eat absolute garbage. I was wrong. What you did was a very good thing and I'm sure it made him feel very happy. We need more people like you. My dad's mom tried to make kolodets, a Russian aspic with meat in it, but didn't want to take the time to actually make it correctly so she bought the first jello and canned meat she found. The jello was lime flavored and the meat was canned tuna. She wasn't drunk. She's just the worst cook ever. I don't know what it's called or if this is even a real meal. But the host cooked cabbage and carrots until they were soggy, added mayo, sour cream, and some meat, either sausage or hamburger. It was apparently supposed to go on top of noodles, but the host forgot to cook the pasta, and even though I said I could wait a few minutes for the pasta, the meal was served up as is without noodles. So I put a few scoops of the soggy mayo meat cabbage off to the side of my plate, leaving room for the rest of dinner, but there wasn't anything else. No bread, no salad, nothing, just this sad pile of paleness hanging out alone to one side of my plate. I felt pretty stupid with my 5 bites worth of the stuff when the host and family had a huge mound of it taking up their whole plate. This is a meal served by someone else in my own home. My dad was a pretty abusive guy growing up but for the sake of us kids mum used to invite him to stay with us when he had access visits here rather than us flying over there. One year he brought his girlfriend along. She, being relatively lovely, decided to cook dinner to thank mum for hospitality. So she serves up a strange meat casserole full of bones. Mum said, oh, this looks nice. Girlfriend says, oh, I hope you don't mind. I used the bag of meat in the freezer. Mum pauses, and kicks me under the table and shakes her head fiercely at me. We don't eat the casserole, claiming not to be hungry. Mum watches intently as dad eats the entire lot, including my serving. Later she informed me, the bag of meat was dog food. 
she relished the opportunity to watch dad eat dog food, whilst sparing me from the same fate. I'm still not sure what it was. My ex-boyfriend's mom served something that looked like mac and cheese, chicken, broccoli, corn, and something red shoved into a blender. The something red was probably tender heart, given that it was in a blender. I had friends who lived in a farmhouse with about 25 cats. Their house reeked of cat pee and the cats were sleeping and crawling all over the place, including sleeping in the cooking pots on top of these tall cabinets. And then the alcoholic man of the house was making borst. And because he was wasted, it took forever. And then when he served it, it was mostly wine. The bread was good though. That sounds about right. Had a friend who fashioned himself a bit of a baker. Made a buttercream frosted cake with zero sugar in the icing. Imagine a cake frosted with butter. Shudder. I would eat that. So I'm at the girlfriend's and her neighbor invites us over for dinner. She also invited another guy over my gf had just told me was being treated for some sort of sex addiction. So we have salad. Salad being just iceberg lettuce. Seriously. Nothing else but Italian or ranch dressing. Then the sex guy decides he wants to help serve me some spaghetti. Everyone else just served themselves. Despite there being a perfectly good utensil everyone else used he just reaches his bare and washed hands into the pasta and plops a handful on my plate. I didn't know what dude specific sex surges were about but I felt like I was eating pasta a lapiness. Went to my friend's house for dinner in junior high. They were husky fellows. The dinner was deep fried burritos with mayonnaise on the inside out. It was disgusting. Sunflower seeds. I was practicing music with another dude and his mom would ask me to stay for lunch next time. I declined because I'm vegan and didn't want to make her effort, but she insisted. Next week she gave me a huge bowl of sunflower seeds while they were having a warm meal. I see what happened there. You said vegan but she heard a budgie. 10 plus years ago, I was dating this girl. Super cute, fun to be around, intelligent, and laughed at all my jokes, whether they were funny or not. She asked me over to her apartment one night because she wanted to cook me supper. I had already cooked for her a few times, so she made a nice spread, most of which I have completely forgotten, due to it being completely overshadowed by the most disgusting bowl of soup I have ever encountered. It was, by her description garlic soup but I swear to god I was debating on whether she would believe I was a vampire, and if claiming such would get me away from this noxious bowl of swill. As much as I like this girl, I couldn't find it in me to finish. She tried hers, and made a face that let me know I was in the clear. She eventually figured out what she had done, and I got off the hook for not eating what she had made. I married her, we have 3 kids, and one of the very few rules I have is she's forbidden from making that soup ever again. She doesn't read it, so don't tell her I posted this. I eat me a lot of garlic, fried garlic, roasted garlic, I add garlic pepper to most of my food, I'd at least try this soup. My mother-in-law's life centers around two things, preparedness and calorie counting. Her food is extremely bland and frequently pre-packaged. On Sunday she'll usually make all her meals for the week, even stuff that shouldn't be eaten that many days post prep. One morning my husband and I were extremely hungover and exhausted after being up all night at a party. All we wanted was a greasy hangover breakfast, some strong, hot coffee, and to get to bed. Driving there was pure torture, and as he talked to her, I slithered into the bathroom to try my hardest to purge anything that would come out of my body. When I emerged from the bathroom he mumbled. She offered to make us breakfast and I took her up on it. I'm sorry, I'm so sorry, this breakfast. She had batch cooked a bunch of scrambled egg whites, the kind from a carton, using pan cooking spray and no seasonings earlier in the week. She had also, earlier in the week, cooked up a bunch of turkey bacon. Both were microwaved, and served on a soggy paper plate. Added to that was candle up which I don't really enjoy in the best of circumstances. But this one had been cut up several days before it was ripe, and coincidentally several days before it was served to us. It was flavorless and mildly slimy, and I'm not a coffee snob, truly, but Folgers coffee bought in bulk and brewed from a reusable Keurig pod is about the equivalent of running a stale coffee bean through a cup of hot water. And because this was a sweet, 
lovely, wonderful woman who was serving us breakfast unexpectedly. We had to do the right thing, and sit there and eat the whole, entire, thing. I will admit that I cried in the car when it was over. If you're incapable of serving your guests eggs as they please just don't. Toast and cereal are your friends. A friend, who wrongly thought of himself as quite a chef, served me licorice root tea with bits of sliced carrots and dared to call it a soup. That is so obviously wrong. A clear stock with a few slices or dices of anything for decoration is called a consomme. I grew up in the southeastern US. And met a friend in college who was from Minnesota. I love her to death, but I cannot eat her cooking. That scene from How I Met Your Mother where Marshall's mom is teaching Lily how to make the salad is absolutely spot on. Everything she ever made was covered in Miracle Whip. Dear God why? Ranch. 12 pounds of cheese. Or butter. She made what she called calzones ones which were ham and mayonnaise wrapped in canned Pillsbury pizza dough. Mayonnaise. Mayonnaise everywhere. I was born and raised in northern MN. Straight up Lutheran territory. Lutheran churches are the home of bad salads. My husband is from Peru. One of my favorite childhood foods is tuna salad, which is ring noodles, frozen peas, miracle whip, and canned tuna mixed together and served cold. He finds this absolutely disgusting. Sat down to eat and someone asked for something from the fridge. I was nearest so I got up to get it. The fridge smelled like a landfill on a humid day in August. I could not eat after that. Ugh. My grandma's fridge was like that. After we discreetly made some discoveries we decided she was too old to cook for us anymore and promptly started ordering KFC, pizza, or Chinese whenever we were over there. Edited to make the grammar people happy. Ham tacos. His mom heard I was Mexican and wanted to do a take on tacos, so she made them with ham as the meat. They were not good, but I still ate them. My roommate once tried to fry chicken, and for the most part the skin looked good but it was all raw. So yeah that was pretty bad. I was 8 years old and my friend's dad was a chef at some fancy restaurant. He put something on the table that smelled like feet and I was convinced for a long time that he was a cannibal trying to bring others into his fold. But here's the thing. I usually really liked his food so not to insult him, I ate the entire thing. Moments later, the father sits down, brings the food to his mouth, and says I think the eggs must have gone bad. And then you died. I used to get served some type of macaroni soup my babysitter used to make. It was honestly a nightmare. My brother and I would get it served about once a month and we would both be puking and crying about it at the table and she wouldn't let us leave the table until we finished it. It was honestly torture. She was a good cook as well and never had any problems besides this, but this was like taking normal crappy craft dinner already made and then dumping extra water on top and having it all curdle. Frick. We had a friend make an avocado and corn salad but she had never eaten avocados before. She cut them up in quarters, which was way too big to go with the corn, and all the avocados were hard as rocks. It was terrible and probably cost a fortune. I like this one. She wanted to try a new thing with friends. It could have gone better, but it's kind of sweet. Pretty much everything my mother-in-law makes. My husband used to put ketchup and hot sauce on everything I made when we first got together. I could never understand why. Then I had her cooking. The worst is her spaghetti. She uses the canned sauce, whatever noodles she could find that she overcooks into mush, and whatever protein she can find. She even put hot dogs in there once. Plus she refuses to use his spices and seasonings of any type for anything. They have salt and pepper at their house, but it's for after. My husband no longer drenches my cooking with ketchup and hot sauce, and whenever I offer to cook my father-in-law always asks for my spaghetti, it's hilarious. Comma she even put hot dogs in there once, reminds me of low budget dining in my law school days. Hot dogs benedict, fried egg, a few slices of skillet fried hot dogs. An English muffin and hollandaise sauce made from a powder packet. Not so much worst meal as worst prep. Had a friend growing up. Parents were hoarders. And their home was infested with roaches. And by infested, I mean you'd walk in the front door and see at least a hundred on the walls floors, etc. To their credit, they tried to fix it. Bombs, traps, but with all the hoarded crap, it didn't work. 
One day, his mom was making dinner. No joke, hundreds of roaches, mostly tiny baby ones but still, swarmed all over the counters, sink, etc as she cooked. As she was trying to make plates for us she had set the plates out, then had to shake the roaches into the sink before adding food, yes she rinsed them after but still, when she handed me my plate, I had no confidence that roaches hadn't crawled all over the plate food before it got to me, chicken wasn't terrible. I went to a sleepover at my best friend's house and when I slept over his mum usually just ordered pizza or something to save herself the hassle and dishes but for some reason she felt like cooking. Now my friend had previously warned me his mum was not the best cook in the world but didn't want to hurt her feelings. So he asked I just try to eat it and move on. Now when a 11 year old warns you that his mum's cooking is bad you best prepare yourself because wow it was bad. I was served the worst spaghetti and meatballs ever, the sauce honestly tasted like burnt. There is no other word to describe it. The pasta was so overboiled it turned to mush when touched by the fork. The meatballs were so inconsistent in size they were all cooked differently some were fine, some were burnt and some were underdone. But really that didn't matter anyway they tasted like nothing and they barely held together due to the fact that they were literally balls of meat, nothing else, no seasoning no onions nothing. Just meat rolled into spheres that did nothing to distract from the burnt tasting mush I was eating. We both managed about a third of a bowl and then ran away from the table to go play a game or something. It has been like 14 years and I still remember it like it was yesterday. No joke, the lack of punctuation in this comment only adds to the experience. My husband's aunt on his dad's side is a fantastic woman. She is incredibly nice and loves my husband like a second son. Her food sucks. The last time we ate there she made roast pork with applesauce on top. The pork had been cooked for hours but it wasn't falling apart tender, it was hard and super tough. It also had no flavor to it. She opened a jar of applesauce that she warmed up in the microwave to top it with. The combo was incredibly gross. Half warmed super sugary applesauce on top of super tough tasteless pork. That is a real shame. Pork and apple can be so amazing together when done right. The last Thanksgiving I had with my family, my sister and I showed up to help, do dishes etc. My mom was drinking a lot that day, and every day, so she's getting less interested in cooking and more into singing girls just wanna have fun on repeat. I go and check the turkey temperature to discover the bird is basically a block of ice. Okay clearly not having turkey for dinner. I call my relatives driving in from out of town to see if they can pick up food. Only to discover they are not in fact coming. The previous week my mom in a drunken haze stole their tiny expensive dog. I asked how she knew. Her purse barked. My mom then ran from their house telling haters to frick off. Slipped on wet grass. Fell on the expensive puppy and broke its tiny expensive back. In the time it took to have that conversation my mom took the minivan out for a drunk drive for who the frick knows what. My sister and I called the cops to report her drunk butt. Then my sister left and I had Thanksgiving dinner at McDonald's. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.